It has been a fascinating, inspiring and mesmerizing day up until now. And now I hope I want to invite Brian Kennedy to give some concluding remarks in order to structure all the information we just got poured in our heads. So please, Brian, structure the day for us, please. Well, thank you. Structure of the day. Um, well, first of all, let me just say, um, I mean, to all those whose hometown is Leuven, and uh, to recognize that you have in this experiment um, and this now um, anticipated laboratory um, an opportunity to attract very, very considerable attention and reputation to the city that will build upon what you already have. Um, I think that's very, very important. In other words, I'm saying to you, um, go for it. You know, the type of courage that you're embracing to, to remake your museum is not something that's given to many museums. Um, and uh, you've already had a remake um, which has got a lot of attention. And the organization of this day um, has led, for me personally, I have to say, to much higher um, uh, result than expectation. I mean, I expect it to be interested and to learn. Um, but what I've found is that in the first presentation that Ernst made um, with Loda, that Ernst, in talking about the competence model, has demonstrated a very comprehensive um, effort, which is you know around attitudes, knowledge, skills, and reflection, with all the details that he had as examples of each of those four points, um, a method that it is is new, and um, I mean I've read most of the literature, um, well much of it anyway in English, um, and some translation uh, over the last twenty years or so. And this is a model that is very, um, at first glance, um, very um, carefully worked um, and pays attention to um, the, the, the issues that would be involved in acquiring competence. And competence isn't a word that um, I've used, um, and yet it is clearly something that people want to have. Um, I think there's a caution around it, um, which is that you know the opposite to competence is kind of the same as the opposite to literate, you know, incompetent, illiterate. So I think there's a, there are some issues there that I'd like to unpack as we move forward. Um, but in terms of um, Loda, I thought that, you know, the whole idea of looking at um, research theory, practice and plans, that whole sort of uh, flow model um, that you talked about and the fact that we have personal competencies and then competencies that exist uh, in, in a method. And the again, the various... Uh, four part the classic i mean you'd be wonderful in an mba seminar they just love four part grids right so uh, i was interested in where you start one two three four i always wonder where does four end up it usually is cultural um, but i thought that was really fantastic about visual perception and uh, um, visual uh, uh, creativity and imagination visual language and communication visual analysis again in this kind of structure you've got something that is also new and um, i think it's based in models that were um, we're familiar with, but it presents it in a flow way and um, that will lead to greater competency. Um, and I think that there was some sort of um, touching again with Peter at the end um, talking about wine. I really would encourage us to think of ourselves as not just visual uh, museums and museums focus on visual literacy, but particularly paying attention to multiple intelligences, paying attention to, attention to the multiple senses. It's one of the more interesting things about her human condition um, that um, we remained in our prehistory uh, much closer to the ground than we are now. It was only when we became erect that the chemical senses, which are associated with um, taste and, and uh, our nose, became much subsidiary to what ultimately in the 18th century became the gentlemanly senses, which are vision and and hearing and once our society codified these more intellectual senses um, we had the beginnings of the loss of our sensory abilities in the western world and so we've subjugated the rest of our senses very very much actually to vision um, and vision of course is associated with word accumulation as well in text and I think that you know, David Howes and the Center for the Senses and the welcome that he made to people in the International Visual Literacy Association Conference this year in Montreal um, was very much an effort to try to re-engage 
um, the multiple senses, and not just the basic f five uh, Aristotelian senses, but to investigate other kinds of senses as well. So, for example, when we did the playtime show, we were investigating, um, you know, senses related to particularly um, ones that are hugely important to our well-being, but often not stated, like, for example, balance. I mean, to be balanced, I mean, whether you put order and care, so whatever opposite you want to put, we look for some sort of harmony. And what um, creates that sense of flow within us is our belief in rhythm, that the rhythm of, of life and society um, actually runs us. And so these kinds of concepts, I think, are pe things that people really relate to now uh, in our world. And therefore, we can use them as um, basis for, uh, for, for action within the museum. Um, Ernst then described the application of the model of the gallery um, that was then detailed uh, by Isabel and Peter. Um, and I think that you know, the various ways that they stated how much we communicate by images um, as opposed to word text. So image is a form of text, of course. Um, and we've a real problem you know, in getting the point across that Peter and Isabel made of the, the importance of images. But to understand that the split that's occurred within academia between the literary scholars of text and the scholars of image, um, who themselves use a lot of words, um, has caused this a uh, really kind of um, um, schism, um, which needs to be reunited within the, the academy. And so I'd call all those professors and uh, people who are, you know, doing PhDs and the like, uh, to really embrace that as a future potential um, for your own work. Um, in the triangle that Peter talked about with ethos and pathos and logos, I think you've also got a very sweet um, play, um, as we just saw in uh, the uh, film upstairs, on an ancient theme um, contemporized, and, and I thought that was really rather wonderful. Um, Luke, um, you're a museum of the image. I think it's just a tragedy that you're losing that name. Um, because um, there aren't many of them. And, you know, the relationship in the games that you played in terms of um, uh, introducing people to an interrogation, essentially, um, in a positive way of, the, of, of their own culture, and by actually offering it back to you uh, in exhibitions is inspired um, and, uh, you know, should be copied all over the world. Um, so I hope that you'll continue with that. Um, I'm sure that you will, um, but that you'll find ways to... Um, uh, I mean, if you if you can't um, be divided, we'll let you conquer. So, you know, you're going into a museum that will have other parts to it, but you've got a methodology that you can actually infuse into those other areas. And I hope you'll, you'll, you'll win through with all of that. Um, Yun, I thought that was a beautiful demonstration. I've obviously seen them before um, of how to, how to do the VTS method. And we were just talking on the way down about the contrast between the method um, that we've just experienced um, and what that really shows is there's no one size fits all. There's no one ruling method. There's no formula. But there are opportunities uh, for us to engage in our, in our museums uh, with experts who have different ways of going. And sometimes they're in our own cities. And sometimes we have to bring them into our museum, as you've done today. So I think that um, where we, we ended up um, with the, you know, what something is and what something is not. Um, it sort of resonated with me, so whether it's really a triangle or really a, a circle or really a square. Um, it reminded me of a story that, um, you know, I was only a year or two in in Toledo and we were having a meeting in this great big room, um, the room where you saw the extraordinary work by Gabriel Daw with the, the vortex of, of thousands of colored threads. And I asked them, um, the board, I said, what shape is this room? And everybody's agreed that it was a double cube. But it clearly wasn't. It wasn't high enough. But it was good enough, right? Until somebody who was of uh, much more advanced years than the others explained to them analytically why it wasn't a double cube. So the sense of close looking, um, yeah, it's like a circle, so it is a circle. Well, that's not going to be good enough in our society. We'll have to have a much greater opportunity for clear vocabulary in order to be able to address the kinds of challenges that we face as a museum. So just to conclude, um, this is my first experience of a um, international cooperation around um, topics that resonate very, very profoundly, personally. And to that extent, um, I um, laud your rarity 
at M. Levin, but also absolutely pr praise um, your ambition um, and all the ways that you can continue to experiment and show will bring back um, the, the, the great article that was produced by Dan Cameron in Canada uh, in the 70s, which was called um, The Temple or the Forum. And so it was the first sort of unpacking of the traditional museum as a temple and beginning to explore it as possibly having a, f a forum uh, possibility. And that got translated in the subsequent decades in very, very different ways. Um, so, you know, starting with the Pompidou opening out to the forecourt. Um, but the, the alternative to the classic museum is actually not a laboratory uh, for ideas. Uh, I would challenge the fact that museums are not strictly speaking laboratories. Um, they don't do experiments in order to find conclusions. Um, they are not in pursuit of facts, in facts that we may find out subsequently are wrong, but, but they're not in pursuit of conclusions that are scientific. Um, they are in pursuit of openness to possibility. In fact, they have the inverse relationship. So I, um, I just question the, our, the care that we need to apply in using that word um, and really unpack it so that it really means what you're trying to say. And therefore, the old-fashioned or much older concept of um, the dialogic forum, which is very much you know, the principle of, of visual teaching strategies, offers maybe more democracy to our audiences uh, and therefore a, is, a, is a greater ambition. Anyway, that's just a, a provocative thought just to end, uh, but to say that uh, I've loved the day. I thought the richness of all the speakers and everything that you've added to it uh, is very, very exciting. And I love the interactive way of engaging all the people present. So um, thank you so much and thank you for inviting me. Thank you all.